Hi, in this video I'm gonna convert this into this. Well, maybe not exactly, but at least I'm gonna make it water resistant or maybe even waterproof. So let's start. To make your car fully waterproof, it's not only electronic that should be sealed, but also some mechanical parts. Point one, the wheels. It might be surprising to some of you, but if you use the stock wheels, there are two holes in each rim that are used to ventilate the tire. Just use an electrical tape for both holes, but be careful when pressing the extra weights inside the rim, because you can accidentally damage the tape. This is exactly what happened to me, but more about it at the end of this video. Point 2. Hubs. The wheels should be already unscrewed, so now you can remove the steering knuckle. Now gently remove the bearing and the drive shaft from the axle housing. Apply some sticky grease inside the housing. What kind of grease? I personally use the military PM600, but any other grease designed for bearings should work as well. And use a lot of it. Now push the bearing back again, but try to avoid pressing on the internal ring because it can damage the bearing easily. Instead, find a tube of 4mm diameter and press on the outer ring evenly. It's also very important to remove the grease residue from the surface, otherwise a sand can get inside and damage the bearing easily. Once you clean the surface, you can install a dry shaft back again. And what about the bearings inside the steering knuckle? Well, unfortunately there is no place to apply any grease inside, so to let those bearings to live longer, you should clean them up with a demineralized water each time you finish driving in the mud. When assembling the steering knuckle, do not tighten the screw too much, because the knuckle needs to move freely. Now repeat the same from the other side, and then you can take care of the real wheels. So to extract the bearing, you need to remove only two small screws. Apply some grease, clean the surface and assemble it back again. Repeat from the other side. Point 3. Differentials. Unscrew the shaft from the differential. Then unscrew the steering link and remove 6 screws from differential cover. Now remove the worm gear with the bearing by turning the wheels. Apply some grease into bearing hole and put the worm gear back inside. Now apply more grease, but not too much, mostly on the edges of differential cover. Assemble the cover, the shaft and steering links and repeat the same on the rear side. Point 4. Gearbox and motor. Honestly, there is not too much we can do here. The gears are made of plastic that should not be greased, the holes for the shafts are large, so it would be very difficult to seal. The best solution in this case is to use compressed air or a demineralized water to clean the gearbox after driving in mud. And the motor is brushed, so it does not require any special treatment. Just clean it with demineralized water once you finish driving. Point 5. Steering servo. I use a stronger Emacs servo, but the procedure for the stock servo looks exactly the same. Unplug the servo, unscrew the horn and unscrew the servo from the basket. There are four small screws on the back. Unscrew them, then gently remove the top and bottom covers. Be careful, because there are gears inside that fall out easily. Find the small electronic board and cover it with a dedicated product like the Thermopaste PVB varnish, link in the description, or in a cheap way using ordinary nail polish. Because there are no high temperatures inside, you can use a nail polish without any problem. Once dry, apply some varnish on the plastic housing edges and install the back cover. Now apply some grease on the top gear, but the top gear only. Then apply varnish on the housing edges and put the top cover on its place. Once you make sure it works properly, you can screw the rear screws, but do not tighten them too much, because it can stop the mechanism to work freely. Now you can put servo back again into car, but remember to center the wheels. Point 6. The ESC. First unplug all wires from the ESC. Then remove stickers and open the housing. And now it's time to figure out can we use a nail polish here or not. What it depends on? You can use a nail polish on any PCB until the temperature of the electronic components is not too high. Let's say that 60-70 degrees Celsius is the upper limit of the nail polish. After a few tests with full throttle, a registered max temperature of the ESC components between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius so I think we can safely apply a nail polish on the PCP board. 
Don't be afraid to use plenty of varnish and try to seal every hole you can find. However, try to avoid to get nail polish inside the on-off switch as it could stick the switch in place. Besides, in the worst case scenario, if water enters the switch, it can only close the circuit and then it will act as if it was always on. The output pins on the other side are more important. Use nail polish to cover each unused pin. You can also apply a sealing coat on the plugs that will be plugged to the ESC. After it's dry, place the PCB inside the case and plug the motor wire. As for the battery, I suggest to use an extension cable that will be permanently attached to the ESC. Now apply a sealant to the plugs and make sure that the varnish covers all vulnerable places. Point 7. Battery A LiPo battery can be very, very dangerous when exposed to water. The simplest and safest way is to use another type of battery, the nickel metal hydride, which do not react with water. You can also buy a waterproof LiPo or seal the LiPo you already have with a Plasti Dip. Link to that product in the description. However, you can also use a balloon as a simple and cheap way to seal the LiPo. Connect the LiPo to the extension cable, place the battery and cables inside the balloon and seal the entrance with electrical tape. And it's done! Now it's time for a quick test. It seems to work fine, so let's take this car outside and try something harder. After a few tests like this, the car still works great except for one minor issue. By pushing the weight inside the front wheel, I had to damage the tape covering the vent and water got inside. To solve this problem without removing the tire from the rim, I had to remove the weight, carefully vacuum up as much water as possible and then let the tire dry for a few days in a warm place. If you like this video, give the thumb up and subscribe. Have a great day and see you soon!